Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie with Pocket of Preschool and tonight we are going to talk all about the math sorting and graphing unit plus tons and tons and tons and tons of sorting and graphing activities you can do with your little learners to get them up and moving, sorting and graphing, doing all the things. Um, but what I want to ask you is do you do a, a like separate graphing unit or a separate sorting unit or do you sprinkle everything in all year? So for me personally, I sprinkle um, all of my math in. So I try and make sure to get like a graph and a graphing and a sorting activity every month. Um, and then if I notice a kiddo is struggling or kiddos are struggling, we, we, I focus on that more during small group or things like that. So. Just tell me in the comments what you do um, in your classroom so we all get to know each other and everybody else's classrooms work. Um, so yeah, so tonight, like I said, I am going to show you the sorting and graphing math unit, which you can grab, go up to the top of this post. And I want to tell you a little quick thing about the unit. So this unit can be used a couple different ways. You can sprinkle it in because a lot of these things and um, all the activities, they're not really... Um, themed or like a season or a holiday. So you can use them anytime during the year. Um, it does. You could use them in the fall, in the spring, in the summer. Um, you can use them for RTI. You can use them for small group. You can use them for interventions. You can give them to a parent helper and have them play games with the kiddos or may, maybe a volunteer or, or if you wanted to, you could do a separate graphing and sorting unit. So kind of whatever works for you in your classroom, in your school, in your community, um, and your kiddos, because some years, um, every year is different because there's a, um, a different mix every year. So again, at the top of this post, you can grab the unit. It is half off um, until midnight tonight. After that, it goes back up to normal price. But, so this is the unit. It comes with um, all the organizational things. I keep mine on a binder ring. You can put yours in a binder. Um, it's got a table of contents with all the things, and it's clickable, but... I want to show you one thing in there. There's a book list. Um, so you got to have good math books, right? Because you want to read good math books at Circle. So I'm going to show you some of my favorites. Um, this one is actually in Scholastic. It's an oldie but a goodie, but they just um, updated this series. Um, I got this series from Scholastic this year. So here's all of them. Um, it's the Math Count series. I'm sure you could probably search on Scholastic for it or maybe even get it with your bonus points. But these are really great. They're super simple pictures. Super, super awesome, simple. Love it. Um, so that one's sorting. This one I just found on Amazon. It is the Crayola sorting book. I love it because there's real pictures. And it has like real life things in it. Like they're sorting seashells. They're sorting um, things at the bakery. They're sorting dogs by color so i really like this one it's the crayola sorting book um and apparently there's a whole series there's like counting opposites pattern shapes which i am actually going to go um check those out um so yeah so this is a good one um this one has been around for forever but i love this one it's a pair of socks um and it's about matching so this one's really great for those three-year-olds and you can even talk about patterning with this one too because socks have patterns, but it's mostly about matching. Um, and it's one of those um, math start books. So if you're gonna introduce um, sorting, it's a great way to start, at least start talking about um, matching. And then here's another sorting one, The Three Firefighters. It's another math start book. Um, they sort by size. And it's just great, super simple text. Beep, beep, vroom, vroom. It says it's patterns, but they actually sort too. They sort by color. And I love this because it's their sorting cars. And that is one thing that everyone has in their classroom. And you can always sort cars. Like they don't have to like be the same type. You can just grab all the cars and trucks that you have in your classroom and you can sort them, make graphs with them, which I'll show you about in a minute. But this is one of my, one of my favorite um, books. Awesome. So those are some of my favorite books. And you can read these at Circle and tie in, get some, sneak in some math in there too. So those are some of the books. And again, there's, um, book, there's a book list in there. There's just a couple more that I didn't mention in there. But in the unit, 
if you grab it, there are real photos and then directions for everything along with any um, printables that you will need. So let me show you all the goodness that is in the, um, in the unit. So everybody probably was wondering like, why did I do like sorting and graphing together in one unit? So I originally wasn't gonna include graphing in, I was just gonna kind of sprinkle graphing in, but then I realized how, how much fun and great standards you can address with graphing. So I included graphing in with sorting because a lot of times when you're graphing, you are really sorting too because you're graphing by color um, and a lot of things like that. So that's why I kind of put these two together because um, they kind of mesh a little bit. Um, so we're gonna talk about, we'll do, let's do sorting first and then we'll talk about graphing. But I do have a poster for um, graphing and it is, it's super, it's a super simple poster. It's nothing exciting, but it's something you could put in your math center and you, you could just tell the kids that graph looks, they look different sometimes. Like sometimes you can make a graph with pictures um, and then you can do that, do that, make a picture graph with your kiddos. So you can do a bar graph and then you can do a tally graph. And obviously when they get in older grades, there's like line graphs, line like plot graphs and things. But this is super simple for just our little learners right now. And I mean, we all make Apple graphs during Apple time, right? So that's one I think they can really um, kind of make that connection to and a weather graph because a lot of us chart the weather at least all year or sometime during the year. So that's the one that they can really easily make that connection to in, in real life. And then I also have a sorting poster and just some of the different ways you can sort. So you can sort by color, by shape, by size or by texture, kind of like smooth or bumpy or hot or cold or just all the different ways that you can sort. So that's a super simple posters and those are both included in the unit. Um, you can always, um, there's directions in here to, if you wanna make these bigger for your classroom, you can do that too. All right, so let me show you some of the fun sorting um, activities we have. And I try to make um, a lot of these activities, what you can do um, with kind of any manipulative you have. So if you, maybe you have counting bears, but you don't have chains. Or maybe you have, um, I don't know, pom-poms, but you don't have buttons. So a lot of these activities you can do with all different types of man manipulatives that you have on hand in your classroom. You won't have to go out and buy a ton. Um, you guys know, if you follow me, you know I love muffin tins. I just like them because they're fun, they're easy. This is a big one, but you can also use, just use two smaller ones, and these are at the dollar store. Um, but this is just, I just did a crayon, so they're literally sorting by color. So this is a great one you can do. You can use math cubes for this. You could use pom-poms, and you can even sneak in some fine motor, and they can use the tweezers. Um, so yeah, so this is a super simple one. And again, they're just sorting by color. Use tweezers to sneak in some fine motor. And the little crayon printable just fits right in. It's perfect. And then another way that you can sort by color. Get rid of this. Is just with the, I just have the plain circle colors. Um, so you just plop those in the bottom and I just have these beads because these are actually used during the color unit um, and beads are really easy and um, inexpensive to buy. If you have littles that put things in your mouth though, make sure you use bigger beads because obviously these are tiny like pony beads. Um, but you could use beads, you could use foam shapes, again, pom-poms, um, buttons, you could use really anything for this, but they're basically just, and again, I just used two, and you can have them from the Dollar Tree, and look at this great fine motor when they're sorting. And I did include like gray and black and brown and white, because those are the colors I think kiddos struggle with the most. And then you just sort them in. But this would be great to have like um, on the table in the morning for a morning table time activity. Um, they'd be great for like fine motor bins, if you do fine motor bins, or just put in, like I don't do fine motor bins, but this would be great to just put on a tray and put in the math center or just on the table um, as an activity. And these little bowls, if you guys wonder where I get them from, I get these little bowls from the Dollar Tree and they fit right in the muffin cups, so they're kind of perfect. Kind of perfect. 
and they're just like in that in the fancy dollar section. So um, so yeah, or the fancy like fancy party section and the dollar section. So there is that activity. And then this one is a sorting by size. So I have a small, medium, and large. And pom-poms are perfect for this. These pom-poms I got at Walmart in like a little bag for a dollar. I think this is like two little bags. Um, but these are great because there are medium, or <laughs> large, medium, and small. And mine says big, but I switched it to medium in the packet, just so you, or large, medium, and small in the packet, um, just so you know. So they can sort, and then again, you can sneak in and use your, your little tweezers to sneak in some fine motor. And then this one, there's one more. This one has shapes on it. So you can sort shapes in your muffin tin. So I love shape buttons. One, because you can get big shape buttons and you can get smaller ones. So then you can sort by size, shape, and color. So buttons. If you are going to go out and buy one manipulative, I would say for this unit, um, I, would get, I would get some shape buttons because these we use in my classroom all the time. Um, and they're great because you're doing color, shape, and size. So buttons are really a really great go-to in my classroom. Um, so yeah, so they just pick the button. This one is a circle. And they just sort. And again, hands on. They can feel the sides. They can touch the shapes. They can sort them. Um, if you want to, if this is maybe a little bit, if they think this was easy, or maybe because some kiddos think this is boring, you could add a color dice so they could roll the dice. They could have to pick out a green button and then sort it by size. So the green button is a square. And then they could roll it again. So you can make it into a game, make them interact with each other, which again is getting those social skills and the, that oral language going. I have a, um, a oval, and then they roll it again. And this one's purple. I have a purple circle. Um, there also are, in this pack, there are spinners. So you just grab some of these clear ones off Amazon. Um, but there are different, there's cubes. So you could do this with that. So you, there's a little crayon one. So they, if, if, and kiddos love these spinners. They just love spinning them. And all you do is, like, you can tell my tape's on there. <laughs> just tape it on the back and spin it. Oops. And so they would have to pick, oh, I gotta pick a blue one. I have a blue oval, and then they can sort it in the right place. So you can always add a spinner or a dice to any of these games just to kind of make it a little bit more interactive. So again, muffin tins from the Dollar Tree. Gotta love the Dollar Tree. Um, so another fun sorting game. And I have these different sorting mats. So there are some worksheets in my unit, but it's mostly a lot of sorting mats and sorting games. Um, because we all know kiddos learn through play, so sorting mats and um, graphing mats are the way to go for this. So this one is um, jars. There's also laundry baskets or baskets, caves, and then trucks. So I'm going to give you some things you can do with each of those. So again. These would be great. You could use buttons. You could use those little gems if you have shaped gems. You could use foam shapes. But again, they're just sorting by either shape, color, or size. And just so you know, developmentally, kids sort, will be able to sort by color first. That's a three-year-old skill. By shape second, four-year-old skill. And size third. So that's a five-year-old skill. Um, small, medium, and large. Not... So they should be able to sort by small, medium, and large by age five, or, or age five-ish. Um, but that's small, medium, and large. They'll be able to sort by large, small first, obviously, because that's easier. But that medium, they just don't notice the difference. And they'll push the medium in with the small, or they'll push the medium in with the large, depending on which one it looks closer to. So just so you know, three-year-olds will be able to sort by color. Four-year-olds will be able to sort by shape, and then five-year-olds will be able to sort by size, small, medium, and large. So there are these um, sorting boards. There are also trucks, because we know kids love trucks and vehicles. So you can pretend that you have cargo, and you can grab some blocks, 
you can just add some cube blocks so they could sort by color and you can have them stack them up whatever they want to do um, if you're doing shape you could use pattern blocks for these not pattern blocks um, like buttons I also in this unit since some of us don't have maybe access to tons and tons of manipulatives I do have button cards so a whole bunch of different shaped buttons different sizes different colors and I have shapes and these are kind of like a really cool like watercolor shape so these are really fun so you could use if you don't have a lot of these manipulatives no stress just use these cards that are included and you can sort by by shape with your with your color cards so I try to get it to where a lot of things are included in here for you guys um, these are great because a lot of us have counting bears and counting bears are actually small medium and large so these are great you could also as I knock stuff over um, if you wanted to you could put a, um, a shape sticker on the bottom or maybe you could draw a shape on the bears belly or maybe you just don't sort, sort the bears by shape but you could do like large small medium and put the little bears in the cave and again these work with any like any time during the year a lot of these are not seasonal so and then you could sort your bears by color again we're getting them touching they're sorting they're actually moving objects around they're touching they're feeling they're learning through play um again not just doing a worksheet a cut and paste so i know some of us do a clothing study and clothing is great because clothing a lot of clothing comes in different sizes so i also included these baskets which are fun right and then I also included these um, little socks because the, this also goes great with the sock book. Where's that? So if you have this book, a pair of socks, you could do a sock activity with it. Um, so they come different colors. They come small, medium, and large. And you can sort them by that. You could also just match them. So like this is a matching pair of socks. And you can match them and they could hang them on a clothesline, make it super interactive. You could, I didn't put shapes on here because I didn't want to make the socks too distracting um, for um, littler learners. So you could just draw a triangle on these, you could draw a square on them um, and make them match that way too. You could also sort these with buttons. So again, just sorting by shape with the buttons. Super, super fun. So we got our slot cards and our button cards and our shape cards. That's another fun one. I really do love, love this book. It's so fun. And a lot of people have what silly sock day sometimes at school for like um like a theme day or something. It's a great activity to do, sock activity to do um on the days where you have like silly sock day. Super fun. Okay. So if you're sorting, you have to sort by air, land, and water. So I put that activity in here for you guys. So you can use your vehicle counters and sort by land, water, and air. And then I also put in vehicle cards. So that way maybe you don't have maybe you don't have vehicle counters in your classroom or you want them to sort other things besides just the vehicle counters. So they can sort that by air, land, and water. Again, do, you can use it for a transportation theme or you can use it any time during the year. I also put an animal sort if the animals are in the air, if they're on the land, or if they're in the water. So you can put them in the air and you can again use real animal figures just from like your block center or maybe you have some in your classroom and you can just sort by air, land, and water. And again, I did include the cards. So, um, the buttons I got off Amazon. Somebody's asking where I got my buttons. Um, my big buttons I got off Amazon, which I will put the link in, the, in there. I will put the link in for those when I'm finished. I think they're in my Amazon storefront, but I can't guarantee it. I can't remember. 
Um, and I the smaller ones, the smaller shade buttons, I got at Michael's. And I, of course, you, you know, use a coupon, of course. Because. So it also comes with plain sorting maps, and I can't find them. So I'm going to pull them out of my pocket. <laughs> because I have everything in my binder ready to go. Here they are. Here's some of them. I'll find them for you. So there's also plain sorting mats in here because sometimes you just want to sort something you're learning about or maybe you want to pull this out to go with a, a special learning theme that you're doing. So this is a really perfect example. So maybe you're doing a fall theme. So maybe you're doing a fall theme and you have some of this like fall table scatter. So maybe you want to have them sort it by color and it looks like there are four colors in this so there's a board with six a board with four a board with three a board with two and then there's also circles so there are six on the circles there's four on the circles and there's two so i'd probably pick this one to use and so these are great again you can use these for anything because i know a lot of us have so much of this like Theme table scatter um, that you use for the light table. So you can just sort either by color. So they could put all the yellow ones together and maybe they'll put all the orange ones together. And then to help um, make everything visual because we know a lot of our little friends, everything for them needs some visual support, right? Especially if you just put the activity out for like um, a morning table time activity. And of course they can't find the color I'm looking for. Hold on. So it comes with these little sorting cards and you can add these sorting cards to any of the boards. It's probably on the tray that I had prepped to use for this activity to show you guys. And I, I have apparently lost it, <laughs> of course. But it has, so you have the little crayons. So it has, it comes with, com, comes with them big, but obviously that's too big for this. So you would wanna use the little, um, the little ones. So you would put the little yellow crayon here, the little brown, the red, and the orange. That way they have a visual support. And again, they can use tweezers um, to sort to get in some of that fine motor. Well, apparently it's, there's the five colors because I found a green leaf. So you'd want to use like the five sorting board or maybe you just don't put the green out if you don't want to. And that's okay too. And that way you have a visual on your mat so that way they know how to sort them. So let me give you another example on how you could use these boards. So maybe you wanna work on just, maybe your kiddos are struggling sorting by size. So, <laughs> so maybe, I'm just gonna spread them out over here because I can't find them. So maybe you just wanna sort large and small. So maybe you're just gonna sort large and small. So they're gonna put the large things over here and they're gonna put the smaller items over here. So maybe they're just sorting by large and small. Maybe you have some groups sorting small, medium, and large. Maybe you have some groups sorting small and large because that's how you differentiate for your kiddos, right? You make the activities easier or simpler based on what um, they need. All right, so. There's that, and there are also um, things like in here, like pointy and round. So maybe you want to sort shapes because you can. You can also sort um, different ways too, right? You can sort by maybe round shapes, and this is a pointy shape, a round shape, and a round shape, <laughs> and a pointy shape, and a pointy shape. You can also sort items from nature. Maybe it's the fall, and you want to sort um, leaves. Maybe oh. You want to sort rocks. And I also have bumpy and smooth in here, which I want to show you. That reminds me. So here's an example I showed. Ooh, got all of the glare. So you can do like a bumpy and smooth. And then you can also do giant graphs. Um, if you guys follow me, like today, um, on today, I, on Instagram, I did an Instagram story how we did a giant letter sort. So we basically did a giant letter sort on butcher paper and I just drew hearts because for Valentine's. And since we're doing a Valentine theme and I put letters in the middle. Well, you can also do that 
for, I'm going to take it out so it's not a glare, um, for math and for sorting. So uh, this is literally my table. And then I used these big color cards. And I just put lines down the butcher paper. And then they sorted the cars by color. And then it's sorting and it's graphing at the same time because they're making a graph because each one's going up and you can tell which one has the most, which one has the least. They love this. They actually asked to do this again the next day. And you know it's a good activity when they're like, can we do this again? Um, so they love that. Here is an example of small, medium, and large with shells. So again, just a big piece of butcher paper. I just drew two lines down the middle, put the cards on there. I didn't even glue them. Just grabbed a bucket of shells and put it out on the table. These are great for morning, um, morning and dismissal activities. Um, here's one we did in the fall. I just drew some trees on a big piece of butcher paper. I put out, looks like pom-poms, sticker dots, um, and then I put the color cards color cards on there and they sorted just by green, red, and yellow because that's what we were doing our apple theme. Here is one I did with hula hoops. So you can use hula hoops to kind of make a Venn diagram. And I did bumpy, smooth, and then bumpy and smooth in the middle. And again, I just put out my bucket of rocks next to it and they sorted away. Um, this one we did small, medium, and large, and I used trays, and I also used a tray that was small, a medium, and large to kind of help them with that visually, and those were just circle buttons I had, and then this was a graph that we did, and we sorted the buttons by shape, and again, I'm just using these cards that come with the pack. If you don't, and again, if you don't buy the pack, you can still do these activities. Just, like, draw a red, a red, like, red squishies or red like squiggles on the one side and draw, you know, make, um, a, do, draw the shapes on the butcher paper. So you don't have to have these cards, but if you buy this pack, you will have the smooth and bumpy, there's heavy and light, um, small, medium, and large, there's the shapes, and I do have all the shapes too, so if you wanted to do um, pattern blocks, you could do that too. And then pointy and round colors, all the things. So that is all of that. I'm gonna put this back in so I don't I don't mess up my little my binder pack because I use this for my for my kiddos too. So yeah. So that is all of the playing graphs. And you can also too, if you're using these playing graphs, you can um, use the spinners. So they have to spin, pick a color, and then sort it just to kind of you know make it a little bit a little bit trickier. Oh, Nikki asked, do I get my team themed table scatter from Amazon? I want to say, so this fall table scatter is actually from Amazon because um, I couldn't find any. Um, but typically Hobby Lobby has themed table scatter for almost every theme. Like they have Halloween, Christmas, um, fall. Sometimes it's in the Target dollar spot, not all the time. Sometimes you can find it at Dollar Tree, not all the time. But usually Hobby Lobby and Amazon has it. It's usually the cheapest at Hobby Lobby though. So yeah, and it's great for the light table. And if you wanted to do these sorts on the light table, just print these on that transparency paper um, or that vellum paper and the light will shine through. And then you can do these sorts at the light table with all of your um, table scatter that you have. And I know Lakeshore has some like transparent buttons. They have, um, transparent like um all kinds of like numbers letters all the things for the light table so you can always do like short too or try like short all right so that is a lot of the sorting activities so now i want to show you some of the graphing activities so just like with the sorting i put in blank graphs so like there's, I think it goes, I think there's one that has four, five, six, and seven. So they're just blank, but I did put a big bar at the bottom so they kind of know where the start is. So here's some examples of what we did. So they, these are those sticker shapes you get from Michaels and they just graphed the shapes and I just gave each of them like literally a handful or you can say, 
Okay, um, keep graphing until one gets to the top, like a race to the top type of game, and then they're sorting by shape. You can also use dot markers, and they roll the dice, or spin, spin the spinner, and then they dot that many, and then it's like a race to the top game, which one got to the top first, which one has the most, which one has the least, what, are there any that are equal to? So these are really fun, and these you can totally put in the kiddos portfolio or keep for like um, to, for student work files. These are great. I love foam stickers. They're my favorites. And there's also plain color um, sorting boards. And then this was to, to remind me that you can use the spinners with any of these. So this one kind of looks like beads. So you can do beads with this. There is a graph with cubes. So you can spin the spinner and then put that many on. And then as you go, the one, they'll get taller and taller and you'll be able to visually see which one has the most or the least. Um, and I didn't put the lines on this one because they'll stack um, the cubes. And then of course, I mean pattern blocks. And then I did chains. And then colors, so you can use any counter for these. So if you are doing a dinosaur theme, use your dinosaur counters with these. If you're doing insects, use your insect counters. Um, if your kiddos love dinosaurs, use the dinosaurs. Maybe put these out for a morning table time activity and give different sets of kiddos different counters. Um, again, you don't always have to do everything related to your theme, even though I know we want to. You don't always have to. And then I did a brick block, so you can use either the Dupo size Legos or the smaller Legos with these. So, fun, simple graphs. And then, my favorite type of graph is the food graph. <laughs> so, I will say, um, the night I was taking photographs of the food graphs, I may have had just candy for dinner that night. Possibly. <laughs> uh, probably. <laughs> Guaranteed. Okay. All right. So this one. So and if you can't use food for these, there's there's only like I think it's only 10 pages. So if you can't do food, it's totally okay. Um, it's only 10 pages long. So no worries. Um, this one is for Fruit Loops. And all of these come in color and in black and white. So that way if you just want to use them once and then they can pitch them and they can just color them in at the bottom. So we have Fruit Loops, Skittles, and you give everybody just one little package of Skittles. These would be great too for um, like class parties um, to kind of sneak in some learning. So if you're doing like a Valentine's Day party, you can totally do, oh, I'll tell you that in a minute, hold on. But yeah, you could totally do this for like Halloween party. It could be like a Skittles graph. This one is for goldfish. So just grab the little bags of goldfish. This one is gummy bears. So grab some gummy bears and they can graph those. And again, all these candy graphs, they come in black, black and white or color. That way if you um, don't wanna have to like wipe them down afterwards, you can um, just use the black and white ones and they can color the bottom. So this is what I was gonna say and then I stopped. Oh, here's my Fruit Loop. Look what I put my Fruit Loops in. <gasps> little bowl. I love these little bowls. These I find, these are really fun. Just, just something fun to put your manipulatives in. They are the little like popcorn cups. Um, you can get them in the Target dollar spot sometimes. I think they're just, they just sometimes just change up the way your activity looks, but they're really, really little fun little bowls. Total side note. But, so if you're having a Valentine's Day party, you could totally do this. And again, these are just using those plain graphs, but I've Everybody that gets their Valentine heart, they can, maybe they get a little box or a little baggie, and they can graph the hearts. And this would work for any themed candy, so you could do like gumdrops around gingerbread or Christmas time, you could use um, like jelly beans around Easter, um, you could really use any themed candy with these graphs um, around any holiday. Um, yeah, and did you see what my baggie says? So I, 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 I don't like my kiddos to always eat all the candy. <laughs> so like this says, sensory play, do not eat. So these, 
sometimes I keep candy for like two or three years, and I just tell them that that it's um, this isn't this isn't real candy. It's pretend candy, and then then they don't eat it. So I'll say, oh, this is just our, our fake candy, and then they don't eat it. But then we have something fun to play with. Um, you could also do noodles. So if you're doing a grocery store theme, you could sort the different kinds of noodles. So if you're doing a health theme or a grocery store, you can just sort all of the different kinds of noodles. And you could also use a dice with these games so they could roll the dice and they could say five and they can just pick out five noodles. One, two, three, four, five. And then they would have to put those on the graph. So you can always sneak in counting by adding a dice to any of these graphs. All right. I'm telling you guys, this unit has so, so many fun things. So this is a race to the top because all kiddos love to race. They do. They love to race. They love to be first. All the things. So this is a race to the top. And then I have, there's like a pet. There is a transportation. And then there is a construction. And they all come in color in black and white. But you can play them different ways. Obviously the black and white ones, they can just color them. So what you do is you put a clear spinner on the top. Let me move these out of the way. Here, I'll show you the dot one that's dotted. But you put a clear spinner on the top, and then if you have them color each one a different color, and then color their bottom to match. And then, or you can do it too, it's totally up to you. I love to use dot markers because it's quicker, um, especially for kids who don't like to color, because some of my kiddos don't like to color, and that's okay. But I still want them to do the graphing activity. So. They just roll it or spin it and then they put a dot on that one and I always do whichever one gets to the top wins. That way they don't just fill up all of them <laughs> because then it's not really a graph, right? It's more of just like a counting, counting game. So that way if you tell them it's a race to the top, that way one always has the most. There's different quantities in each one and they have to count and um, analyze the data. Otherwise they're just filling up the whole board. If you use the um, color boards, you can use pom-poms to cover up the things. You can use, so you could use pom-poms. Let's see. You could also put it in a dry erase pocket and they could spin it and then they have to color the um, squares of the dry erase marker. Here it is. So like here's the five, oh. Apparently my dry erase marker doesn't work. So they would spin it and then they would color it and then they would spin it again and color it so that way they would make a bar graph with a dry erase and then you don't have to keep printing these out over and over and over. Um, so they could do pom-poms or cubes on here, like any manipulative. One that is really fun that my kiddos love to use, which I don't have my magnet one over here, are bingo chips. So, like you would say, like, okay, the green is going to be the turtle, and then maybe the dog will be blue, the bunny will be pink, and the ki kitty will be orange, and then put on the top, and they spin it, oh, blue, and then they race the top, and then at the end, when they're done, they use a magnet wand to clean it off, and they love using magnet wands to clean off their boards. It just makes it extra, extra, extra fun. Oh, here's my magnet wand. So we also have these I spy and count graphs. So again, they come in color or in black and white. So if you're doing color, all well, they do is they count how many, and I have them count by color until they're like one, two, three, four, five, six. And then they have to color in that many, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then color, or they can even X them out if they want, but somehow they can track which ones they've counted, and then they color it in. And again, these are great to put in their portfolios. So it comes in color, or in black and white, or color. 
So whichever one you want to use. You can also use gems. This one is stuck. So you can also use colored gems for this. And I try and have them match. So you, what I would typically have them do is X out as they count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then they would count out seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then they can put them on. I try to make the things in different colors. That way they can color code their manipulatives to kind of match um, each one just to kind of help them visually see the difference in which one has more, which one has less, which one is equal to. Because when they're little, I think if there's a whole bunch of colors going on, on a graph, it's hard for them to visually see the more and the less and the equal to. Especially if the quantities are kind of similar, like if it's like five, four, and three or something like that. Um, it makes their eyes work really, really hard. So here is my magnet wand. So what you could do, again, they just exit out. You can tell that they did a little bit on this one. And then they would fill in the graph. We're just going to pretend I filled it in. But at the end, look what they can do. <gasps> they pick it up with a magnet one, and life is good. And then they erase all their marks. And then they can give it to the next person. So for the um, I spy count and graph, it has nature, shapes, and fruit as a theme. And then I have a counting graph. So if you really want to just work on quantities, you can totally do that. Again, it comes with one, two, three, four, five, or up to 10. These are really fun to use mini erasers on or animals. Either one works. And you can use manipulatives based on your theme that you're doing. Apparently, I can't count and talk at the same time. You can use counters for this, totally up to you. You can have them put stickers in here and then keep this for their portfolio. Um, these are great. I love doing things with stickers because then I can throw them in their portfolio, again, or with dots. But I do love stickers, I think, the most. But it could be because I just love stickers. So yeah, and you can co co copy them on colored paper and laminate them just to kind of make them pop a little bit. You can use mini erasers with them. Anything your heart desires. And again, I try to make them not theme specific. That way, if you don't have a certain manipulative in your classroom, you um, can still do these activities with your kiddos. And then, of course, I have to have plain ones, right? So this is just, I can sort by color, I can sort by size, I can sort by shape, and you can use the cards for these that it, that came comes with it. You can use actual manipulatives that you have, like the buttons again. And then, oh, here are the sorting. Wait, oh wait, this was, these are the ones I couldn't find <laughs> from the sorting. So these are the ones I couldn't find from sorting. I put it in the wrong stack. So there's that. I was very excited about the sorting ones. So back to graphing, even though I got sidetracked. So. We talked about at the beginning about how there's different kinds of graphs and there's those posters included in this set and there's pick, there's tally graphs. So have your kiddos ever done a survey? Because we actually did one today because in my Valentine's Day pack there's a survey and they walk around and they say, like for this one, they I have them all put, put these on clipboards and now I, I model it first and I say, do you want to ride in a boat, a plane, or a train? And they have to tally it. And then they walk around and they have to tally it. And then to make this one a little bit more trickier, at the end they have to put which one has the most and they have to color it. And again, this is perfect to go in their portfolio for a work sample. Um, but yeah, so now they're doing the survey and they're making the graph. But I also, to go with these, I also have pieces to make a class graph. So you can talk about how you can make a graph with pictures or you can make a tally graph and sometimes your results are different um, because obviously when they're doing the tally graph, I had one, we, we did, um, it, I think the graph was, do you like bears? What was it? Do you like bears or bunnies the best for Valentine's Day? Because the book had bears and bunnies in it 
And they're like, well, that our tally graphs are all different. And I'm like, well, maybe people change their minds. So we had a whole little couple minute conversation about how sometimes you, when you take data or when you do graphs, and you record results that sometimes it's different because sometimes people change their minds or sometimes things change. Um, so yeah, so all of the pieces come with this and the little picture cards, they all come with it. So you can make your graph and hang it on your wall when you're done. But again, it's a great way to talk about data and use a picture, picture graph and a tally graph. There is also, a graph in here with the graph pieces. Do you like popcorn, yes or no? And then your favorite pet. So cats, dogs, or fish with the, all of the pieces. And if your kiddos love, 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 love doing surveys and graphs, I also put some blank ones in there. So then they can make up their own surveys in your classroom. Because it's really fun if you have, like if your kiddos really take to this and they love, love, love it so much, um, what you can do is have each day somebody different in the class can be the surveyor and they, every morning, that's their like arrival job or maybe they can do it during snack or whenever you want. Um, but they have to make up a survey and they have to um record the results, they have to go around and ask everyone, and then they have to report the um, report their data at circle time so they can be like, well my graph was, do you like pears or pineapples? Um, or maybe, do you like, do you like broccoli, yes or no? Or do you like to swim, yes or no? And you can even write it in, they can scribble write it, and they can do dots to represent, they can do tallies, they can, do dot like a dot marker, they can do X's, however they want, so that way they can represent the data different ways. And again, there's two different ones. They have a yes and a no, and then like a three choice. But that is really, really fun if your kiddos, some, some years my kiddos really, really take to surveys and they go bananas with them. So this is kind of perfect and that it's just really great um, too that they're talking about math and they're excited about math. And it's just really, really fun. So that is in there too. Um, so that's everything that's included in the unit. Um, and again, if you haven't seen my unit before, I have, it's a whole bundle. So this is the sorting and graphing unit. There's also counting to 10, counting to 20, which I have, it's all done. I just apparently don't know how to put the label on, real life. Um, 2D shapes, there's patterns and colors. So those units are already done. This one will be for my graphing and sorting. Um, these labels do come with it. You can also keep it in a binder if you don't want to keep it in a like three ring hole punch like I do. Um, it's totally up to you, whatever floats your boat. I do this because then I literally put it in here. Like I have my counting to 10 right in the top because it just fits in there and then I don't have to have binders on top. Um, but I do have a binder just so I can show you guys another option. Um, but yes, I keep it in these drawers. You guys have an awesome night.